Shalom. This week's Torah portion is Sejos Ekev. Our Torah portion ends with a promise to the Jewish people about their upcoming battles against the people of Canaan. God said that if you faithfully keep all the mitzvot that I command you, and love the Lord your God, walk in all his ways, cling to him, the Lord will give you all the nations in Aaron's Israel. You will be given nations greater and more numerous than you. Every place that your foot treads shall be yours. Your territory shall extend from the wilderness to, to the Lebanon and from the river, the Euphrates River, to the western, the Mediterranean Sea. No man shall stand up to you. The Lord your God will put the dread and fear of you over any place that you set foot, as he promised you. In his commentary to the last puzzle, Rashi asked about the repetition of the two words fear and dread. Rashi explained that the words, the dread of you, refers to people close to you, and the fear of you refers to those far away. For dread denotes sudden terror, and fear denotes apprehension enduring for many days. Rashi's explanation is confusing. The promise God makes to put fear and dread into our enemies is referring to the wars that the Jewish people are about to battle before entering Eretz Yisrael. There are only seven nations, and the area of battle was pretty small. What faraway enemies are Rashi referring to? The Sforno wrote two interesting comments to these pesukim. When writing about the phrase, no man shall stand up to you, the Sforno taught that even outside the land of Israel, no man will stand up against you. Just as Rashi was difficult to understand when he talked about faraway places, we can ask the Sforno if this message is referring to the conquest of Eretz Yisrael, then why would God make assurances about lands outside of Eretz Yisrael? The Ramban explained that these psukim give needed background to help us understand the psukim and Rashi and Sforno's comments. Ramban explained that our sages taught that these psukim contained two promises. The first promise was that every place the Jews want to conquer in Syria, Lebanon, and places like it outside of Israel will be theirs. The mitzvot will all be practiced there because those lands will be considered Eretz Yisrael. The second promise is that no one will stand before you, whether in the land mentioned or wherever you set foot in. From the Ramban, and listen to this, we learn that there are two places the Jewish people are meant to conquer, the land of, er of Israel in actual and the land of Israel in potential. The land of Israel in actual's borders start with the Mediterranean Sea and extend to the Jordan River. This is the land the Jewish people are to conquer. But the land of Israel and potential's borders stretch all the way until the Euphrates River and what's today Iraq. While the Jewish people aren't commanded to conquer this land, if they do, the land takes on the status of Eretz Yisrael. Having this er status of Eretz Yisrael brings many mitzvot along with the land. Rashi explained God's promise that no one will stand up to the Jewish people referring to a faraway place and the Sworno taught that it refers to the lands outside of Israel. Both were teaching about the land of Israel in potential. Even when we go to war in land not yet Eretz Israel, God will ensure that no one is able to stand up against the Jewish people. God's promise to ensure Jewish victory in battle isn't dependent on place or even time, but rather on God's relationship with the Jewish people. And that relationship extends well past any border. Shabbat Shalom.